What is up, survivors? My name is Bo, and I'll be your host for Daisy Noob School. In this video, we'll be talking about food and all the different ways to cook it. But first, hit those YouTube buttons, leave a like, as it helps the video get out there. Also, I'm live on Twitch almost every morning of the week, playing DayZ. So if you have any questions, suggestions, or you just want to chat, I'll see you there. Right, let's get cooking. There are quite a few types of food in DayZ, but only a few of them can be cooked to get the bonus calories. So in this category we have vegetables and mushrooms, meat and fruit. All these types of food can be boiled, baked or dried using the right tools. Some of the food you find or catch will have to be cut into smaller pieces before they can get cooked. Take note that if you cut an animal without gloves, your hands will get bloody, and you'll need to wash them before eating to prevent any kind of bacterial disease. The easiest way to cook your food is by using a long stick and roasting it over the fire. To gather a long stick approach a bush that's usually taller than a character with a sharp tool and you'll get the option to gather sticks. You will need to sharpen the long stick before attaching the meat. Remember if you're missing a knife, look for two small stones and combine them to craft an improvised knife. You can also bake your food directly on the stove or grill of a fireplace. If you're using a pot or a pan, you will need to add a piece of fat along with the ingredients. Once added to the fireplace, they will begin to cook. Remember that each piece of food will use a chunk of that fat to get done. Baking the food will give you a big boost in calories, but it will lose some of the water intake. The boiling process is simple. Fill up a cooking pot at any well, pond or river and add the ingredients. Once attached to the fireplace, the food will get boiled and there's no lard used up in the process. Boiling the food will give it a lower boost in calories than baking, but it won't lose any of its water. If you let the food bake or boil for too long, it will get burnt. Burnt meat could be consumed with the right medicine, but it's not worth taking a risk getting sick and losing more calories. You could also dry the meat and vegetables on any of the existing fireplaces, where there's usually four slots reserved for smoking. There's no calorie boost for smoking the food, but it does extend the lifetime of the item. All these cooking methods can be done in both outdoors and indoors. The campfire can be upgraded to make cooking more easy. You can add a cooking pot and a tripod to the fireplace for boiling and baking purposes anywhere outside. The campfire can be also upgraded to a stone oven which has three cooking spots and four for drying. In the same way a fire barrel has the same amount of cooking spots as the oven. If you're wondering how to craft these upgrades, check out one of the previous videos on how to build a fire. On some of the newer cold modded maps, there are static fire barrels, which can be used for cooking and warming up. If you combine a gas stove, a gas canister, and a cooking pot or frying pan, you can cook both indoors and outdoors without giving out too much light or noise. Also, the set can be carried in your bag, so it's a must-have for any traveler survivor. Want to cook indoors? You can use the stoves and the fireplaces in almost every house in DayZ. Just remember that there will be smoke coming out of that chimney. To help you out, here's all the existing fireplace types within the buildings. Also, if you check the video's description, you'll find two great infographics that show spoiling times and the calories of every type of food. On some of the cold modded maps, the food will be found in a frozen state. You will need to lay the food around the fire to defrost these cans before consuming. Take note that the fire has to be at least 400 degrees before the defrosting process begins. Also, if you want to hold on to the food and eat it later, you might want to go through all the defrosting stages, just to make sure the item won't freeze again. The can will go from a frozen state to freezing, then drenched to wet and damp before losing the special status. Okay then, that's all I had on cooking and defrosting. Stay tuned for some more Daisy Noob School. Remember to drop a like, a sub, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and join me on Discord. Thanks for all below. Stay frosty, survivors.